So uh, one of the questions we asked everybody when they walked in here was to put on their badge, how old do you think you will live? And, uh, you know, I think the 90% had hit 120 or higher. But I think what's happened is society has trained us to have certain expectations, right? You know, if your parents or grandparents had made it to 75 or 80, you expect that. And when you hear the oldest living human being is 122, mm -hmm. 123, you think, okay, there's a brick wall there. Yeah. Um, I, one of the questions I'd love you to share, one of the answers I'd love you to share is, do you think there is an upper limit to human aging? Uh, well, I know there isn't. You there, know there is not. Yeah. yeah. It's not even a question. <laughs> Drop the mic moment. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> uh, there, there are lots of reasons why I give that answer. To me, it's self-evident, but uh, for some people it isn't. And there are critics of this idea that we can live beyond 120. But one of the best examples is uh, that we've been able to extend the lifespan of every species that we've tried to extend the lifespan of, and we're no different from those species. That's point one. Um, the second is that there are many species who are very similar to us genetically, biologically, that live a lot longer than we do. Uh, the best example would be the bowhead whale, but a lot of whales live longer than us. And that, you know, they have children, they're conscious, they produce milk. Uh, so we just need to mimic what they have that allows them to live so long. And I think we have a much better idea now of how to do that. Um, and so, yeah, that there is no law that says we must age. Remember that. So one of the things that's going on, we've spent the last few days talking about uh, massive advances in AI and quantum computing and sensors and networks, big data. And the realization is we're in a period of very hyper growth of these technologies. And, um, you know, as Ray Kurzweil, who will be speaking tomorrow morning, talks about the bridge to a bridge, that your job is not to live now to do something that's going to get you an extra uh, 100 years. It's to get you the next 10 healthy years to intercept those technologies. Uh, do you agree with the idea, David? I, I think you do, but maybe your time frame is different, that this next decade is very different than any time ever. Oh, for sure. Uh, so we're already many decades ahead of where I thought we would be technologically um, from when I started. Um, I thought I was working to help my children and future children and, and, uh, and grandchildren, but it turns out that the pace of discovery has gone way faster, and that's partly due to um, technology. We can now do an experiment that analyzes billions of genes in the same time frame uh, in a day that used to take us years of, of work and billions of dollars. And that allows us to do very quick experiments. Um, the other thing that makes me super positive about this is that uh, we've made a, a, I think, we've made a, a major breakthrough in our understanding of not just why we age, but also how to control that process. And uh, the, the turning point in my career uh, was the discovery that there's a backup copy of information in every cell, in every, everybody's cells, um, and that that backup copy can be accessed. And there's a switch that you can flip that allows cells to reset their biological age and function again as though they were young because literally they are young again. And that fact that there is a backup copy changes everything. We're no lo I'm no longer talking about slowing aging. I'm talking about true age reversal multiple times. And I don't get laughed off stage anymore when I say that. Do you want to give it up for that? <laughs> I mean, the idea that we, we aren't uh, tied to the tyranny of aging and death is extraordinary. It changes everything. The evidence that you have for this backup copy, there are a few things you speak about in your book and your podcast. Could you speak uh, just a few examples there? Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got some visuals we could call up, actually. Yeah. So let, let's call up the, the slide with the, the four faces on it, the top right on our so, guide here. Slide six, I think it is. Yep. Yeah. That's a good one. All right. So uh, let, let's do a show of hands. Uh, so how many of you have heard of the epigenome or at least epigenetics? Hopefully everybody's raising your hands. Okay. <laughs> all right. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> They're all good students. 
All right, so the, the, the concept is that what we've realized is that most of disease and disability is not driven by our genes, it's actually controlled by the regulator of those genes, which is the epigenome. One of the best examples of that um, are these people here. So these are um, individuals from two sets of twins. These are in Denmark, a very large study of Danish twins, looking at the effects of genes versus environment or epigenetics, which is what responds to the environment. Uh, and so if we click the button forward once, you'll see that the identical twin of these two individuals, uh, hopefully you can see, looks a lot younger and is actually younger biologically. We can now measure that. And it turns out that by living a healthy lifestyle, often you hear about uh, doctors recommending these things. We know a lot about how to slow down the aging process. You don't just look younger, you actually are biologically younger. And that's why if you exercise, you eat right, you eat less often, you take the right supplements, you will be biologically younger and you will actually stave off disease until much later. So what does that actually mean? If, if we go back one slide, the concept is information. So the main type of information that we know about is the genome in the DNA, but there's also another level of information that's just as important and even more complex, that's the epigenome. Uh, and those are the structures that control how the DNA is bundled and shaped and which genes out of the 25,000 get turned on and off when we're forming an embryo um, and we develop. And those genes can be switched on and off depending on how we live. If we put our bodies in a state of ad perceived adversity or adversity that isn't too damaging, the epigenome will actually respond and be more stable. So the idea is you want to stabilize your epigenome so that your cells remember how to function youthfully for longer. The analogy, as shown in this slide, is a compact disc. Hopefully all of you remember what those things are. <laughs> Barely. Incredible technology. You could fit about 20 songs on there. Um, but when, when I teach at Harvard, the, the kids are like, what are you talking about? This is ridiculous. So if you're young, it's like resetting a computer or, or pressing the buttons on the side of your iPhone. Uh, so what the analogy is that the digital information is the, is the DNA, um, and that's the music, but you need to read it. It's not just pits on, a, on an, uh, um, a metallic disc. The epigenome is the equivalent of the reader of that information, and the songs are the, are the genes. And aging, I believe, and our new paper presents very strong evidence this is the case, that aging is, the, is akin to scratches on the CD so that the cells still have the music, the genes, but they're just not read correctly at the right time in the right place so that your cells forget how to work. So we see that brain cells become more like skin cells and skin cells become more like kidney cells. We become a melange instead of highly differentiated, functioning, youthful cells. And so that's the information theory of aging. And what we found out in this paper is what drives that process in large part is broken DNA. Avoid x-rays, CT scans, if you can help it. Um, don't fly too much. <laughs> if you can help it. Yeah, well, don't do what I do. And, uh, and uh, live w ways that actually prevent those breaks because that disrupts the epigenome we showed. But here's the, the cool point is that we've discovered you can polish off those scratches and get back the beautiful music of cells and their youth. So uh, that's extraordinary. There's a concept that has been talked about for some time of longevity escape velocity. That there's a moment in time that for every year that you're alive, science can extend your life for more than a year. And I think the numbers that people talk about today is that we're, for every four years, we're adding a year of life. Uh, uh, where are you on this? And where do you think, what do you think will reach longevity escape velocity? How far out are we? Mm. Uh, well, so, the, so we get about three months for every year we stay alive, currently, without breakthroughs like the one I'm talking about. Uh, let me give you an update on where we are today. Please, uh, and whatever you're willing to say, I know some of it's amazing. Uh, the, and we can extrapolate from here, but remember it's not linear. Yes. There's one thing you know from, uh, from this uh, conference. The, the journey has been a rapid one. We made this discovery that you can uh, reset the age of cells, human tissue, mouse tissue, living mice. Um, a, what is it now? It's about five years ago. It, it was published three years ago. Um, we started uh, working on mice. Uh, we reset the eyeballs of mice to be young again. They got their vision back. That was uh, the cover? Pa a cover that got story. the cover of nature. Uh, that's the. December 2020. Third row, far right slide. 
Uh, yeah, we were very fortunate. Nature was bold enough to put the title Turning Back Time on the cover of their magazine. We're very honored by that. And this is the paper that changed everything for my lab, for my outlook about aging. And what we've done since then is we've, we've formed a company called Life Biosciences, uh, and they've been pushing ahead uh, for all those years. Uh, we've done extensive studies in mice. We needed to know if it was safe. It's, it's very safe. We've never seen anything negative after years of work and driving this process. We found that those three genes, O, S, and K for short, these are uh, gene regulators that set off a cascade of events during embryogenesis to make a young human. Turns out, lucky for all of us, I think, is that those three genes also set back the clock in adult cells without causing tumors or any disease. And without bringing them back so far that yeah. they've lost identity. And, and this is the thing that, that blows my mind, is you'd think that if you just keep it on for a long time, you'd go back to zero, age zero, which you don't want. It's not true. They go, cells go back about 80% and stop. There's a barrier that prevents them from going back to zero if we leave off that other gene. It's a gift to humanity. <laughs> For sure. And uh, so now we're at the point where we're conducting, at Life Biosciences, um, a Boston-based company, uh, non-human primates, these are green monkey studies. Um, I should say that the reason that there's an iris on this cover is that we show that you could reverse blindness due to glaucoma and also old age by resetting the age of the retina back to youth. And those mice got their full vision back again. So the, think about this, your body, if this is true, the body is, looks old, but it's actually, it just needs to be reset. So I don't think of an old person now as an old person. I think it's just a body that needs to be reset. <laughs> Polished. <laughs> yeah. So this is a big deal because, I mean, one of the critiques about uh, the work that you and other individuals in this field have done is it's all done in mice. You know, that's great, but we're humans. You know, mice get all the benefits. But, <laughs> but non-human primates is a big deal. We share 99.99% of our yeah. genetic code with them. We do, and, then, and uh, so I've, I've, I've had a, a sneak peek at the, at the results, and I would say things look rather promising at this point. Um, it's a big deal, guys. It's a very big deal. <laughs> And uh, so it's my prediction that uh, we'll be um, in the next 18 months or two years testing our first age reversal uh, clinical trial in humans um, to cure blindness. And those studies are actually being planned right now and the material to do that is being manufactured. How are you guys feeling about your longevity mindsets now? <laughs> 